you are currently drooling over Elegoo's brand new Saturn IV Ultra 16K resin 3D printing beast. 16Ks. That's a lot of Ks. Now stick around because I'm going to give you my thoughts on my experience with this new 16K Saturn IV Ultra compared to my previous experience with last year's Saturn IV Ultra. Not 16K, I think it was a 12K. But first, we're going to take a spin around the machine, and we're going to start here on the front. We have a 4-inch color capacitive touch interface. It's bright, responsive, and the UI is simple and, and very straightforward. When you power it on for the first time, you'll quickly go through a calibration and self-test, along with connecting it to your wireless network. Now, it's a small screen, right? So if you have fat fingers, the password will be... A a bit tough to type in, but other than that, the interface is pretty nice to use and it provides all the information that you're gonna need uh, to set it up and even while it's printing. On the right side of the machine here, you have a single USB type A port along with your power switch, of course, and your DC barrel connector for your power brick. Now, last year's Saturn IV Ultra had a Wi-Fi antenna here, while this new Ultra 16K has the Wi-Fi antenna built in. Turning it all the way around here to the back, we have a three inch pass-through port that can be used for ventilation or air purification. It's easily accessible from the inside of the machine, and if you have limited fresh air in your workspace, you might consider connecting a small duct and passing it through a window or a wall to keep those odors out of your space. Continuing on around the machine, to its left, we have uh, these machined cutouts that allow you to see the glow of that 16K monochrome LCD as it cures each layer. Now back to the front. The lid is the same lid that was on the previous Saturn IV Ultra, save for it says 16K on the front. Now this means that you actually have to grip both sides to lift it up because there's no handle or you got to dig a finger uh, under an edge somewhere in order to lift it up. Now I love keeping the outsides of my machines clean. So I wear gloves when I'm working on the inside and no gloves on the outside, right? So outside clean, inside dirty. Now I do wonder why Elgu does not include a handle on a lid like this. Cause it makes sense that if our hands are either partially dirty or one hand's dirty, uh, that we can't reach over and open the machine with one hand or at least with one finger, be able to put it in a handle and lift it up. So hopefully we'll see those in future versions. Once we've opened it up, this is where the 16K version of this machine differs from last year's 12K Saturn IV. In this machine, we have a 10 inch 16K monochrome LCD screen with a build volume of 211 millimeters on the X, 118 millimeters on the Y, and 220 millimeters on the Z. Now, one of the first things you'll notice that there is now an LED light in the back corner of this machine with uh, the AI camera just under it. This makes things a little bit easier to see as well as improves the quality of time lapses and the AI detecting issues so much better. It uses the same tilt release technology that we're used to now with a lot of resin 3D printers. Basically, the tilt mechanism tilts away from the print as the build plate lifts, effectively saving time as well as wear and tear on the PFA sheet by reducing the amount of stress across the sheet. Think about it like peeling a sticker. There is a lot less force when you're peeling a sticker back than there is if you tried to just pull straight up and separate the sticker that way. As you would expect, the build plate is fully auto leveling and it uses the same quick release lever that we've seen on previous Saturn models. Now the handle on the top of this particular build plate um, is a little bit more aggressive. It has these two little wings that make it a lot easier to hold onto, which is kind of nice. Um, it's not as slippery. The surface on this build plate is really, really nice. It's the same laser engraved surface as the previous model, and it works incredibly well. In fact, I over cured the first layers of some of the prints while we were testing, and I had to really work, like really work hard with a scraper in order to get the prints off of the build plate. Hey, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. We are a small channel and it helps us out a ton. Now, one of the hottest features of this machine, pun intended, is that this new Saturn IV Ultra 16K has a heated vat. Now, Elegoo is calling it a smart tank heating system, and it intelligently keeps the resin in the vat at a consistent 30C, which is very important for producing strong quality prints. And the interface includes this little heater icon and even a little message uh, if it's waiting on warming up your resin. The vat has two pour spouts, which after using them a couple times on this and a previous Elegoo machine, I am not sure why every resin 3D printer just doesn't have these. Super convenient. And speaking of mess, the same drip tray that came with last year's Saturn IV Ultra is also included in this 16K, which will keep you from dripping resin on the deck um, or down the front, which I did with the previous Saturn IV. 
I didn't use the drip tray, and I dripped resin down the front. A couple of features that I did not test this time around were the power loss recovery and the overheating protection system. Now, power loss recovery, as you know, it's pretty simple. Um, it's been basically put on every new 3D printer in the last couple of years. But essentially, if you lose power while printing, you'll be able to resume printing when the power returns. As for the overheat protection, Elegoo tells us uh, on their website that the printer will pause and alert us if the LED temperatures exceed 80 C. So I guess that's going to help any damage or, you know, at least extend the life of the uh, screens. Now I talk about user experience a lot when it comes to 3D printers. And I even think user experience is far more important than having cutting edge features on a 3D printer. It's simple. Printers just need to work. Um, my hobby is 3D printing not 3D printers. And I really want the printer to just fade into the background so that my focus can be on the print results. With that, Elegoo has done an incredible job again, making this the easiest resin 3D printer that I've used to date. And I am serious. I unboxed it, powered it on, it self-tested, I poured the resin in the vat, sliced up this link model from Gambody, and sent it to the printer over Wi-Fi. I didn't do a test print at all. Elegoo machines have just become so reliable over the years that my confidence is through the roof. I just sent the print and I walked out of the studio coming back only occasionally to film some B-roll. Now when Link was done, I grabbed this Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle model from Gambody, sliced it, sent it over Wi-Fi, and did the same thing. I just walked out of the studio. Now if we're going to be honest, a lot of this has to do with the slicer, but I'm using Cheetahbox Pro, which includes a profile for the 16K machine, and I tested it on both Windows and on my Mac, and both provided excellent results, and making sending prints over the network, so simple. This video is not sponsored by Cheetahbox, but I highly recommend it. Now off the top of my head, I'm not remembering quite what the pro version offers. Um, that's just the one that I'm using, but I'll have that information in the description if you want to go take a look. As for the print results that you're looking at, I need to probably take a little bit more time cleaning and getting all that IPA off the prints before I cure them, but I think that they turned out really, really good. Both Link and Michelangelo have some very delicate parts that could be easily broken off, but I think that the supports uh, in Cheetah Box and of course the quality of the machine uh, played a big part in that, uh, making them like really, really easy to remove. And uh, oh, the resin, I was using Elegoo's Rapid standard resin. Elegoo does also have their own slicer. It's called Satellite 3D, um, and it's available right now. You can go download it. It's for Windows, but I think that there's a Mac version coming. I can't really speak on it because I didn't try it. I just ended up using Cheetahbox. But I'll put that information in the description and probably do something in some future content for that. Now, along with the printer, Elegoo did send over their Mercury Plus 3 wash and cure solution, which I have to say I really appreciate the single device that takes up quite a bit less space in the studio than having three dedicated separate appliances for print, wash, and cure. The wash tub ends up sitting really nicely on the station and is pretty powerful to stir up this much IPA. Then a quick swap out with the curing tray and its curing is super bright and even. I really love the way this is designed with these two very large mirrors here on the back, giving us a lot of UV light reflected on the underside of our prints. I'm actually gonna have Mrs. LM paint these for me. Um, she's super talented at it, and I am not. And uh, she actually did this Bowser from another resin machine last year, and I think it turned out really, really, really well. And uh, I'd love to see her paint those the same. And uh, we'll, we'll throw that in some future content. Now, in order to get them ready for her paint, um, I did hit those with some regular gray paint primer combo uh, that I had here in the studio, and wow, seriously, I think they turned out really good. And if you thought they looked good before, just that little bit of paint just brings those things to life. Now, 3D printers are coming out faster than we can create content for. Some of them are basically iterative changes, while others are complete new machines, game changers. And I think this new 16K Saturn IV Ultra is probably the best resin printer that Elegoo has ever made. It's probably the machine that a lot of people wished that last year's 12K Saturn IV Ultra was. Ultimately, the tech is getting better. And every new model of resin machine that comes out is getting more reliable. And the user experience is making it easier and easier for non-resin people to dabble in resin and be immediately successful. Let me give a huge shout out to my YouTube members and my Patreon supporters. I know that we've been busy these past few months and I couldn't do any of this without you. So thank you. And I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. And we will see you in the next one.
I wish I could paint. I suppose I could practice, but I'm just not good at painting. Like, seriously, look at this. Like, look, can you see that? She just does such a good job. I wish I could do that.